All right. In this video, I want to get into defying Jesus, disobeying Jesus, just doing what you want, even though you call yourself a Christian. Now, the reason why I have this picture up is because I was actually searching for a picture connected to defying Jesus, and it just kind of grasped me and pulled me in. I was like, yeah, you know what? There's times you want to give up, but that would be defying Jesus. It would be disobeying Jesus, right? you got to keep on keeping on. But even when you're basically like this, you're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. He's going to keep you going. So I figured, perfect, you know, I'm going to give a little bit of a rebuke here. So why not some encouragement as well, right? But anyway, the reason why I'm doing this video is because in the forums, I talk to a lot of Catholics and Seventh-day Adventists, and they like to condemn me, saying that I'm defying Jesus and I disobey Jesus. And when I talk to the Catholics, they say that I defy Jesus because I teach saved by grace through faith that not of ourselves, that to get to God, not of works, as any man should boast. And when we believe on Jesus, we are not condemned. We have passed from death to life. And I get into that, the gospel. Jesus cleansed you of your sins in his blood. You're, you have remission of sins, so the sins are gone, blotted out as far as the east is from the west. You're clean, you're cleansed, you're justified, you're sanctified, you're good to go because of what Jesus did, and you put your faith in him. You put your faith in him, so according to God, your life is up there on the cross, and you have Jesus' life, and that is represented by a perfectly clean white garment around you. And yeah, like I said, you are good to go. And the Catholic will say, well, Jesus said you have to persevere to the end to be saved. You're disobeying Jesus. You're defying Jesus. Right? It's like, oh, man. Yeah, you got me there. I'm defying Jesus. And then Seventh day Adventists, Jesus said to keep the commandments. And one of the commandments is that Sabbath day. You're not, you know, you're not resting on Saturday from your physical labor, so you're going to hell. Right? You're not sealed. That's the seal. The seal is resting on Saturdays. That shows you're sealed by God. So, you know, week by week you can be sealed or unsealed, you know? And I'm like, oh, okay, Jesus is the standard, right? Because that's what a lot of these Seventh-day Adventists will say. You follow Paul, I follow Jesus. Okay, okay. Okay, well, let's, let's do that. Let's follow Jesus. You see, this kind of mindset is actually what pushed me away from Christianity because this is how I saw it. Like, yeah, Jesus is the standard. You have to follow Jesus. And when I was looking at it, I was like, there's no such thing as a Christian. I used to make videos about how there's no such thing as a Christian because none of us are living like Jesus, which Jesus required. And that's what I'm going to get into here to show how these guys are hypocrites. You know, they want to follow what Jesus said. Let's follow what Jesus said. You know, this first one may seem kind of silly, but it's something that he actually taught. I think you can read this a bit in the Sermon of the Mount as well. Uh, in Matthew chapter 18, at verse 8, it says, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands and two feet and be cast into everlasting fire. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. You see here, Jesus is basically saying, if your your feet are going to lead you into sin, cut them off. Your hands going to do sin, cut them off. If your eyes are going to be gazing on sin, remove them, right? And it's not like any kind of joke. He says this, I think, in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, talking about uh, just looking at a woman with sexual intent is adultery. And if your eye causes you to do such a thing, pluck it out. Because doing such a thing is a sin, and you'll be cast into everlasting fire. Yet, show me a Christian who is doing this to stop them from 
uh, going out to the bar, going out to the club, uh, looking at porn, touching themselves, right? Where's all the Christians doing this? Right? This one may be a bit hardcore for some, but it is something Jesus said. So if you're going to say, hey, we're going to follow everything he's saying, well, let's let's do that. Uh, over here in Luke chapter 14, I want to read this whole paragraph to give the true context of what is said here at verse 33. It says here, And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and his mother, and his wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost? So here he's telling you to count the cost of being his disciple. Whether he hath sufficient to finish it, lest haply after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able to with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an embassage and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath cannot be my disciple. Yet all these Christians, Catholics, Seventh-day Adventists, and the like, will say they're a disciple of Jesus. But he says to forsake everything you have. Jesus gave that example. He forsake, forsook heaven and all of its glory to come down here to live as a jobless, homeless man preaching to people. He forsook everything. And he's saying, you, you want to be my disciple? you got to do the same thing. All right, and this is passed off again here, Matthew chapter 19. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. You see, this is to have eternal life. Jesus says, you've got to sell everything you have. you got to forsake it all to be my disciple. This is a matter of salvation. So what Jesus is talking about here to be his disciple, you got to forsake everything. This guy's it was possessions. Here he's talking about father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, even your own life. All right? Show me the Catholic, the Seventh-day Adventist, or any Christian that's doing that. Any of you? Oh, but you're you're gonna tell me to persevere to the end or else I'm not saved. Oh, I gotta be I gotta be baptized in water, I'm not saved. I'm disobeying Jesus and defying his teachings. Oh, I gotta I gotta rest on Saturdays, or again I'm defying Jesus and I'm going to hell. I'm not sealed by God. You can see the hypocrisy here, the stupidity. Yeah, you let's follow Jesus. Right? Like he says here, follow the commandments. This one applies both to the Catholics and Seventh day Adventists, but the Seventh day Adventists are going to like this. Not so much the Catholics. Uh, the commandments Jesus is quoting from is Exodus chapter 20, the Ten Commandments written on stone by God Himself. 
It says here at uh, verse 2, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So there's your first one. No other gods before me. Here's the second one. Catholics take that right out of the catechism, and they just say it's part of the first one. That's a lot you take out to slide right into that first one. It's a lot of words. Don't add or remove from the word of God, right? And that's exactly what they do because Catholics don't want children reading this and asking questions because then they would have to beat them and put them in their place for asking questions and not going along with what they tell them is what, right? Because it says here, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children on to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Yet that's exactly what Catholics do. Oh, we're not worshipping, we're venerating. Yeah, you can call it venerating. You can call it honoring. It's the same thing. Worship a God. I'm venerating him. I'm honoring him. Praising him. You just do it to a statue. When God told you not to do that. You'd be saying, oh, God's against art. Well, when it comes to religious stuff, yes. And religion, he doesn't want you using art. Except you're going to justify disobeying God somehow. Verse 7. Here's number 3. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. And that would be not saying, like, God damn it, or Jesus Christ when you stub your toe. That's saying that you're a Christian, but you're not living it. You had to be taking his name in vain. Or the name there is Yahweh. It means behold the hand, behold the nail. Jesus means Yeshua or Yahweh, our salvation. So Jesus means behold the hand, behold the nail, our salvation. If you're not putting your faith in that, then you're taking God's name in vain. You're not relying on the blood of Jesus to save you. And here's the Seventh-day Adventist favorite, the Fourth Commandment, where the Catholics say, on to the Sabbath day, and look at all this that says here. It leads you away from the day that it's actually talking about. So it says here, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, this is not the first day of the week. It's not Sunday. It's the seventh day. As it goes on, six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy maidservant nor thy thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So here you are to honor what we would say in our calendar, Saturday, the seventh day, as the Sabbath. Now if you want to really get into it, you need to get away from man's calendar. This is what the Seventh-day Adventists don't like. you got to go to God's calendar. Like we read in Genesis, the sun, moon, and stars are to tell us of times and seasons. To dictate the month, it was by the moon. And from the moon, it would tell you the first day of the month and so on by seeing the, the new moon, the first slither of the new moon. And that's where you end up tracking the Sabbath is by the moon. So if like you were a law, you're a Sabbath keeper, right? Say you're Seventh-day Adventist. And you don't know what date is because you got lost in a plane crash or some shipwreck or something. And you're just on this desert island. You don't know how long it's been since you, you know, you've gotten free from whatever you were trapped under or in or whatever. And you want to keep the Sabbath. Well, you'd use the moon. Right? And that would tell you when the seventh day is. And uh, that seventh day actually changes at times, month to month. So on the Gregorian calendar, it might be Saturday for the month, but then when the new month starts, that seventh day could be Friday, Sunday, or even a different day on the Gregorian calendar. But it's still 
the seventh day of the lunar month, which is God's calendar. So they're not keeping that. And then you got honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Uh, you know, that part's taken out because they don't want to admit that this law is to the Jews, right? Because he didn't give us Gentiles anything. Thou shalt not kill, that thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou not, shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And here is where the Catholics, since they took out the second commandment, they split this into two because they don't want to say that your wife is your property. It says here, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Well, just like the church is Jesus' wife, he owns us. He bought us with a price. The same goes for our wives. They don't like that, though. Just like people don't like that Jesus owns us. So they fight against that. But this is just showing how the Catholics and the Seventh-day Adventists, a good chunk of Christianity, are hypocrites. Talking about you got to follow what Jesus said, and they want to deny grace. When Jesus brought Paul the advanced revelation of grace, which he brought to the apostles later on, and they accepted. And I actually made a video about that. I don't remember when I called it, though, but it's only a few videos back. I'm sure the title would give it away, the context of what's being said in it. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to make this video showing that these guys are fools. You see, Jesus, he said these things, and we would have to obey these things in that dispensation before Jesus died on the cross. You see, when Jesus died on the cross... Things changed. As an example, Jesus was crucified next to two thieves. And they were being crucified as thieves. And they both mocked him and scoffed him. But one of the thieves repented and that he went from unbelief to belief and was actually admitting that he's a sinner and that Jesus didn't deserve anything he was going through and asked him to remember him when he came into his kingdom. And then Jesus told him, Today you'll be with me in paradise. And that guy never did any work whatsoever. All he did was believe. He wasn't baptized in water. He didn't take the sacrament or the Eucharist. He didn't do any Hail Marys. He didn't do any Sabbath keeping. He didn't say any of our Our Fathers. Didn't do any pilgrimages. Didn't do any charity work. He didn't do anything except for believe on Jesus. Right there we see the dispensation changing. And in the book of Acts, we see that transition from the kingdom of heaven, which is to Israel, go to the kingdom of God, which there is no Jew or Gentile, where everybody comes in by belief. And you see that transition in the book of Acts, where you have Paul, who used to be Saul, persecuting the church, gets converted by Jesus himself, not by the apostles or anybody else, but by Jesus himself. Gives, being given an advanced revelation of grace to be the apostle to the Gentiles, then goes to the apostles to reveal this, and the apostles recognized that this is true and accepted grace. Even Peter ends up saying that, hey, yeah, the Gentiles are saved as we are by grace, not by the law. So you read in uh, Acts chapter 15 where they're discussing that, whether they're going to be circumcised and keep the law of Moses. And they're like, no, 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 no. Let's not put any burden on them except for not to uh, eat blood. Uh, you know, animals that are strangled, they still have the blood in there. Nothing that's sacrificed to idols. And to stay away from fornication. Those are the things they need to really worry about. And outside of that, they're saved by grace just as we are. You know, they're not saved by their works of the law. That's what they were coming to realize. That that's why Jesus died was to save them because they can't save themselves. And that the blood of lambs and goats were never going to take away their sins. So yes, Jesus taught certain things, but we don't follow those things. Because he's talking to Israel. Even Jesus himself said, I've come, but not for the lost sheep of Israel. Not the rest. And he even told his disciples before he died on the cross, 
Go only on to the house of Israel. Don't go on to the Samaritans who are, who are half Jews and don't go on to the Gentiles who are not even Jews. Just on to the house of Israel. It wasn't until later that the Holy Spirit comes and changes that where Jesus even tells them, I got many things to tell you, but you can't handle it. You can't bear it. But when the Holy Spirit of truth comes, he's going to guide you in all truth. So he's letting them know that the Holy Spirit's going to be teaching them some things that he's not teaching them right now because they can't handle it. Then the Holy Spirit comes, Pentecost. Next thing you know, Saul's Paul, advanced revelation, grace comes in. We're in this time of grace where now you can be saved by faith. And you need to accept that while you can because that dismissation is going to end. And guess what? They're going to be teaching grace once the rapture is done. And a lot of people who've been hearing grace, they're finally going to accept it. But it's too late. You're not in that time of grace. You actually have to live by what you were saying. You need to do these things, right? Your hand, your foot, your eye causing you sin. You need to get rid of that, right? You need to forsake everything for Jesus. Family, friends, your own life, the whole thing, the whole nine yards. Uh, you need to keep the law, and that's this law. You need to do all those things. You're going to have to do that work. Or you can accept Jesus now and that finished work. And I hope you do. Thanks for watching and take care.